Bonjour et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome once again to Coffee Break French. Now, lessons 31 to 40 of our course are a bit different from the lessons that we've had so far. Anna and I are out here in Loire Atlantique, in the towns of Pornic and Sainte Marie. And we're going to be recording conversations in hotels and cafes and the tourist information office and so on. And that way you'll get the chance to hear the language that you've been learning in an authentic context. Lesson 31 is a sort of preparation for this process. And I'll be testing Anna on what she needs to know for our trip. I hope that you find the lesson useful. We're at Stansted, we've arrived at Stansted and our flight is in a couple of hours time but we're going to take this opportunity to go through some of the phrases that we think we're going to be needing in the next few lessons as we go around the streets of France and Anna, you're going to be trying out your French, is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, so when we first arrive at the airport in Nantes we're heading towards the coast to a little town called Sainte-Marie Sainte-Marie-sur-Mer Now, the first thing that we'll probably need to do then is find out how to get there because we've not really planned that part of the journey so that we can actually ask these questions in the airport. We've already said nous allons en France. Nous allons en France. But what we can actually say now is nous allons à Sainte Marie. Nous allons à Sainte Marie. So we say nous allons à Sainte Marie because Sainte Marie is a town. So we use à with towns. And normally we use en with places. So, for example, how would you say we are going to Italy? Nous allons en Italie. Très bien, nous allons en Italie. How would you say we are going to Spain? Nous allons en Espagne. Okay, so it's en with countries. However, there are a few masculine countries. Most of the other countries are feminine. Espagne, Allemagne, uh, Italie... Uh, Argentine, lots of different feminine countries, but there are a few countries which are masculine. And these include Canada, so you say nous allons au Canada. Nous allons au Canada. Nous allons au Portugal. Nous allons au Port Portugal. Uh, nous allons au Danemark. Nous allons au Danemark. Nous allons au Japon. Nous allons au Japon. So those are just a few common ones where you say O. Oh. However, when we're talking about a town, we will say A. Ah, nous allons à Sainte-Marie. Nous allons à Sainte-Marie. So let's say we wanted to ask, is there a bus which goes to Sainte-Marie? We would be using the verb to go. Now, I think we've come across this before when we say, I like to go to the swimming pool or something like that. The verb to go, Anna, can you remember that? Aller. Exactly, it's aller. So, we want to use a part of this verb. We can't use aller. We can't say, est-ce qu'il y a un bus qui aller à Sainte-Marie? We can't say that. We need to use a conjugated part of that verb. And the conjugated part that we're going to use is va. Va. Because it's il va, l'autobus va à Sainte-Marie. So, va is the word we need. Est-ce qu'il y a un autobus qui va à Sainte-Marie? Est-ce qu'il y a un autobus qui va à Sainte-Marie? Excellent. Est-ce qu'il y a un autobus qui va à Sainte-Marie? Est-ce qu'il y a un autobus qui va à Sainte-Marie? OK. And we might be told, yes, the bus stop is out there or the bus stop is over there. Um, the bus stop is l'arrêt d'autobus. L'arrêt d'autobus. OK. The word arrêter is to stop. Arrêt is a stop. So, un arrêt d'autobus. Un arrêt d'autobus. So, how would you say, where is the bus stop? Uh, où se trouve l'arrêt d'autobus? Très bien, où se trouve l'arrêt d'autobus? Où se trouve l'arrêt d'autobus? What kind of things might you be told if you were given directions to go to the bus stop? For example, turn left. Um, aller à gauche. <laughs> Okay, you could say aller à gauche, go, left, but the word that we used previously was the word that's like the English word turn, tourner à gauche. Tourner à gauche. Okay, or tourner à, what would be right? 
droite. Tournez à droite. Tournez à droite. Tournez à droite. OK. We also covered words like near to and far from. What's near to in French? Près de. Près de. So, l'arrêt d'autobus est près de la sortie. La sortie, do you know what that would be? Um, exit. It's the exit, that's right. You see sortie written up in doors and things like that. So, l'arrêt d'autobus est près de la sortie. L'arrêt d'autobus est près de la sortie. Okay. Out of curiosity, can you remember what far from and how we would say the bus stop is far from the exit? Uh, L'arrêt d'autobus est loin de, de, de la sortie. L'arrêt d'autobus est loin de la sortie. Excellent. Okay. Now, let's say we arrive in Sainte Marie and we need to find our hotel. How would you say, is the hotel far from here? Est-ce que l'hôtel loin d'ici? Okay, that's, that's almost right. We're, we're missing a word in there. Est-ce que is the sort of question part. L'hôtel loin d'ici. So, question part, hotel far from here. We're missing the word for is. Okay, because it, it's, it's natural to think that est-ce que has an is in there. And it, of course it does. But really that means, is it that the hotel is far from here. We still need the is in there. So, what's the word we would use for is? Eh. That's it. So, est-ce que l'hôtel est loin d'ici? Est-ce que l'hôtel est loin d'ici? Or you could say, l'hôtel est loin d'ici? L'hôtel est loin d'ici? So, using the raising of the voice to introduce the question, est-ce que l'hôtel est loin d'ici? L'hôtel est loin d'ici? So let's say we found the hotel. It's quite likely that at some point in our stay, we're going to be going for a coffee or a drink or something like that. So let's see how much of the coffee and cafe vocabulary you remember now. And of course, as I ask Anna these questions, all our listeners should hopefully be trying to remember them too. So Anna, how would you attract the attention of the waiter or the waitress? Uh, s'il vous plaît. Très bien, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. So they would come over, and how would you ask for a white coffee? Je voudrais un café au lait, s'il vous plaît. Très bien, je voudrais un café au lait, s'il vous plaît. So you could say, je voudrais un café au lait. Uh, you could equally just say, un café au lait, s'il vous plaît. How would you say, for me, a white coffee? Pour moi, un café au lait. Okay, so let's say you were ordering a white coffee for yourself, a coffee for your friend... And a uh, lemonade for me. Um, pour moi, un café au lait, s'il vous plaît. Et pour mon ami, un café. Et pour Marc, une limonade. Très bien. And you got it right. It's une limonade. And the coffees are un café. Un café au lait. What's a tea? Un thé. Uh -huh. And can you remember how to say a cup of tea? Une tasse de thé. Une tasse de thé, c'est ça. Une tasse, c'est féminin. So, je voudrais une tasse de thé. Or, je voudrais un thé. Or, je voudrais un thé. Okay, because thé is masculine. So, what about asking for a glass of wine? Uh, je voudrais une verre de vin, s'il vous plaît. I watch that one. It's not une verre de vin, it's un verre de vin. Je voudrais un verre de vin. Un verre de vin. It's une bouteille de vin. Maybe you were getting mixed up. Maybe you're just going for the, the bottle. Une bouteille de vin. Une bouteille de vin. And the red wine would be? Une bouteille de vin rouge. White wine? Une bouteille de vin blanche. Blanc? Blanc, that's right. It's blanc because it's masculine. Blanche would be used for feminine words. And in a future lesson, we're going to be going through adjectives in more detail. So, having ordered our coffees and so on, in the cafe, we need to ask for the bill. How would you say, can I have the bill, please, or just the bill, please? L'addition, s'il vous plaît. L'addition. Try, try to say that. L'addition. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Now, one of the other things that we'll be doing is trying to get to know the area a little. So, we'll be wandering around Sainte-Marie and also the neighbouring town of Pornic. We need to obviously know the places that are around us, so we might need to visit the tourist information office to find out some information. 
or indeed just know all the different places in the town so that we can ask directions. So let's run through some of those places again. And what would be the word for the tourist information office? L'office de tourisme. Okay, now can you remember, is it l'office de tourisme or l'office du tourisme? L'office de tourisme. That's it, l'office de tourisme. L'office de tourisme. So the tourist information office may give us information about where some other places are. For example, um, can you tell me what the pharmacy is or the chemist? La pharmacie. La pharmacie, c'est ça. What about the church? L'église. L'église. And is église masculine or feminine? Feminine. That's right, it's feminine. What about the station? La gare. La gare, c'est ça. And the other kind of thing that we might want to ask in the tourist information office is some advice, for example, to find a good restaurant. Let's take it at the basic level. Is there a restaurant near here? Est-ce qu'il y a un restaurant près d'ici? Est-ce qu'il y a un restaurant près d'ici? What about if the restaurant we were looking for was a fish restaurant? What would a, rest- a fish restaurant be? Un restaurant pour fruits de mer. Okay, fruits de mer, uh, seafood. But if you say a restaurant pour fruits de mer, that kind of gives the idea that all the fruits de mer are going out to the restaurant. So you've got um, langoustine and lobsters all sitting at the restaurant having their dinner. Un restaurant de fruits de mer, or plutôt un restaurant de poissons. Un restaurant de poissons. So un restaurant de poissons is the restaurant where you go to eat fish. Un restaurant pour poissons is a restaurant where the fish go for dinner. So let's make sure we say un restaurant de poissons. So how would you say then, is there a fish restaurant near here? Est-ce qu'il y a un restaurant de poissons près d'ici? Très bien. Est-ce qu'il y a un restaurant de poissons près d'ici? Do you remember the phrase for asking, where can I buy something? Où est-ce que je peux acheter? C'est ça. Où est-ce que je peux acheter? Or où est-ce que je peux acheter? Whichever you prefer. So where can you buy? What kind of things might you need on your holidays? Well, perhaps you might need a postcard. A postcard in French is a card post. Une carte postale. Une carte postale. Une carte postale. So how would you say, where can I buy some postcards? Où est-ce que je peux acheter des cartes postales? Très bien. Où est-ce que je peux acheter des cartes postales? Now, the chances are you might well be able to buy them in the tourist information office, but nonetheless, you might want to look for somewhere else. If you're buying postcards, you might also need to buy stamps. So, the word for a stamp, I'm not sure if we've done that. Do, do you know the word for a stamp? I think I can remember this one from school. It's timbre. It is indeed timbre. Well done. So, how would you say, where can I buy some stamps? Où est-ce que je peux acheter des timbres? Très bien. Où est-ce que je peux acheter des timbres? Now, if you go into a shop, whether it's a postcard shop or a clothes shop or anything else, what's the person likely to say to you? They want to say, can I help you? Est-ce que je peux vous aider? Est-ce que je peux vous aider? Are there any other versions of that? And there's, je peux vous aider? That's right, the one where you just raise your voice at the end. And also, there's an inversion version of that as well, with the est-ce que je peux, drop the esque, and you've got je peux, invert that, and you get peux-je. But in French, that doesn't sound quite right, so it becomes... Puis-je? That's it. Puis-je vous aider? Puis-je vous aider? Puis-je vous aider? And if you've bought something in the shop, the person might want to say to you, do you need anything else, or do you want anything else? How might they say that? Is that all? Uh, ça sera tout. Ça sera tout. Yeah, literally, will that be all? Ça sera tout. Or they might just say, c'est tout. C'est tout. And in answer to that question, how would you say, yes, that's all? Oui, c'est tout. Oui, c'est tout. So the one other thing that I'd like to cover here in this lesson, before we get to France, is something that's really quite important, and that is being polite. When you're in shops and when you're buying things and asking for services and so on, then there is a good chance that you'll need to say please and thank you and so on. So how do you say, first of all, thank you? Just straightforward, thank you. 
Merci. Merci. Now, in France, it's very, very common to add in a monsieur or madame after that, depending, obviously, on who you're talking to. So, rather than just say merci, much more polite, say merci, madame. Merci, madame. Or merci, monsieur. Merci, monsieur. Or indeed, if it's a, a young lady you're speaking to, then you could say merci, mademoiselle. Merci, mademoiselle. And they will reply by saying something like, oh, don't worry about it, don't mention it, not at all. What's the word or the phrase in French that you use for that? De rien. De rien. Literally, it's nothing. De rien. De rien. Now, there's also another way that you can say that, and that literally means there isn't anything for which you have to thank me for. It's, il n'y a pas de quoi. 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 So that's, again, something that you might hear in response to merci, madame, or merci, monsieur. And people will address you as madame, or monsieur, or mademoiselle, depending on who you are. And linked to this is the whole idea of greetings. So in the morning, for example, in, in the hotel, when you come down for breakfast, somebody will say to you, bonjour, madame. Bonjour, madame. And likewise, you say bonjour, madame, mademoiselle. And if it's both men and women together, males and females together, then the phrase will be bonjour, messieurs, dame. Bonjour, messieurs, dame. And note that you don't pronounce the R in messieurs like that. It's messieurs. Bonjour, messieurs, dame. Bonjour, messieurs, dame. And just running through the rest of the greetings, how would you say good evening? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. What about good night? Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. That's right. Nuit is feminine, so it's bonne. And jour and soir are masculine, so they're bon. And while we're talking about greetings, there's one more thing that we'll throw in here, and that is bon courage. Bon courage. Bon courage pour parler français en France. Bon courage pour parler français en France. What do you think that means, Anna? Good luck for speaking French in France. That's right. Good luck for, indeed, all these experiences that we're going to be having in France where you are going to be put to the test, your French skills are going to be put to the test, and hopefully this will help everyone expand their range of vocabulary and practice the language that they already know. Uh, the gate has now been posted for our flight, so we're going to head off just now, but we'll speak to you, we'll finish off this lesson once we're back in the plane. We hope that you'll be able to put all the language into practice in the coming lessons, and indeed that Anna will be able to put all the language that she already knows into practice in the town of Sainte-Marie-sur-Mer in Loire-Atlantique in France. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench and we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.